and uh, we had uh, three people uh, that we were going to speak, but uh, we missed one because he had uh, personal issues, so we are only going to have two, two people here. Uh, first, we will have uh, Dr. Khalid uh, Karam. Uh, he's the project coordinator and professor of the computer M. Ma Mabar, Mabar. Mabar uh, at the University of Bamlan in on Lebanon. Uh, and well, he's going to introduce what they are doing uh, there in, in his uh, initial presentation. And later uh, we will have uh, Jurek uh, Kuhalev. Okay. Uh, he's from um, uh, from Slovenia, and well, he, he he will also introduce himself because if he, he's going to talk later, so maybe it's better they introduce themselves later. Okay, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a presentation, so uh, I will start with uh, the presentation. Okay, thank you very much for uh, having me here. It's a great event, and I'm really honored uh, to be speaking um, uh, at this stage. Uh, I'll be talking about free or libre and open source software from an Arabic perspective or a Mediterranean perspective. Uh, I have a small outline. Uh, I will start with a definition. Uh, being an academician, uh, we like to do definitions, so we'll start with that. And then... Uh, talk about free software as a public good. And then I'll talk about our mission as Mabar. Mabar uh, is our center for the Arab region, promoting um, the use and the development of uh, free and open source software, as well as uh, the development. Um, and then a uh, little bit of our objectives and what we're doing and who are our partners. And then I will end with uh, QA, actually QA. I will be asking a question and answering it not the traditional QA style of a session, because I've been asked questions from the moderator before, and then I decided to put them on, on the screen. So I will start with the definition as defined in Wikipedia. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but free software or logiciel libre, software libre. So free is not, free is not uh, gratis. Gr free means libre, uh, freedom. It can be used, studied, and modified without any restrictions which can be copied and redistributed in modified or unmodified form. So it's very important that um, we understand that free software, we have the source code. So that's why sometimes it's called open source. I like to refer to it as free software more than open source because the freedom in it is more important than the source code itself. Uh, so again, uh, free software is a matter of liberty, not price. Free as in free speech, not as in free beer. So you, we have the freedom to run, copy, distribute, study, change, and improve the software for any purpose. Freedom to control your own computers instead of the computer controlling what you're doing. Uh, a good example of that is Microsoft Windows. Um, and. The good news is that free software is also gratis, most of the time, but not necessarily. It's not a condition. Um, you know, Richard Stallman, the GNU project, uh, uh, or the Free Software Foundation president and the person who started the GNU project, have defined four freedoms uh, for free software. What he calls freedom number zero, the freedom to run the program for any purpose. Sometimes you you get a software, it's private, um, and it is consumed. On the other hand, if something is, is open, uh, it's common good, but it's consumed. Once you use it, it's, you consume it. I don't know of any example that's common good, but maybe I can define water as being common good, or we hope that it will be uh, at some point in time. Open means, to some extent, free. And then you have a club good, something that is not consumed, yet is not free. And that's the worst you can have. And this is proprietary software, basically. P 
proprietary software, you can use it and reuse it, but you still have to pay for it. Free software is public good. Public good, such as justice, is public good. Good governance, democracies, educational systems, health, security, the air is public good. And hopefully, the water is public good. The water that we drink should be free as well. But free software is public good. So free software is public good. And there are two sources of public goods in the world. Mother Nature, who created a lot of public goods for us, the air, the water, the land, things that we use but remain, and they are reproduced. And governments supposedly provide public goods, good governance, justice, security, health, and education. However, free software is different. They're not produced by Mother Nature nor by governments. They are produced by the community. And they are meant to be used for the good of the community. From this, we, we should believe that free software drives creativity, innovation, and improves education. So we should work on that. So what are we doing? Just, this is just some concepts and philosophies about free software. What are we doing? Mabar, the word is, the, is Arabic, actually, translated like this. Uh, Mabar, uh, so the, this three that you see is silence here, silent. It's the Arab Support Center for Free and Open Source Software. We started about two years ago. It was a project, a joint project by UNDP, UNESCO, and the University of Belamand in Lebanon. Uh, the main purpose is to uh, disseminate free and open source software as a philosophy and culture in academia and Arab societies. In academia because we are basically hosted at the University of Balaman and we believe in academia as an educational, uh, with an educational mission. Uh, so we're basically we, uh, we do training, development and uh, awareness sessions in the whole Arab region. We have a network of uh, partners throughout the whole region. Our objectives, uh, we, we, we do surveys, we conduct surveys, and uh, presently we are collaborating with about eight partners in eight different Arab countries to launch a, um, an Arab-wide survey on the understanding and uh, uh, the awareness level and the needs of the Arab region for free and open source software. Uh, we do awareness raising sessions in forms of uh, seminars and conferences and uh, uh, training. Uh, we do training as well. We do uh, we support development. Um, we have academic, uh, we work with academia and the curricula of universities and schools, uh, convince them to work with free software. And we've built a large network uh, of uh, professionals uh, throughout the Arab region, that's called the Mabar community. So the surveys that we're conducting, understanding the needs, understanding the level of awareness, determine priorities for training. There's a lot of needs in the Arab region for training, and we've, we've been doing training with LPI. We provide Linux Professional Institute training uh, certifications. We've done uh, two so far in Beirut, uh, but we have plans for others in other uh, uh, region. Um, awareness raising, well, basically uh, we we'll try to uh, uh, raise awareness on the potential and viability of uh, free software uh, products uh, as solid alter alternatives to proprietary software. We do this with universities, colleges, and other uh, educational institutions. In the government, even though we're having a difficult time convincing government agencies to work with free software, but we're still working with them uh, closely, uh, NGOs and the civil, civil society in general. So uh, regarding training, we've organized many sessions so far on some of them are awareness courses on the concepts, the, uh, the benefits, the ethical and the legal issues, and the business models that you can build around free and open source software. Um, we've done, uh, again, I mentioned LPI. We do uh, Linux uh, training. Uh, other tools as well, not as much as Linux, because there is a lot of demand in the Arab region for Linux professionals. Um, 
application and content development, uh, we've been uh, defining projects. We haven't done much due to the lack of uh, funding uh, of, uh, uh, of to fund developers. But we've defined uh, priorities for development in the Arab region. We're seeking funds for that. Arabization is a top uh, need. Uh, the Arabic language processing tools for local needs as well. There are some business rules that cannot be imported from uh, applications already available on the net. So you have to develop your own. And uh, there's a lot of need for documentation as well. Uh, so we've been working also, also with uh, academia. Uh, trying to g convince the schools, again, we're having a hard time with that, to make use of FOSS. We've created, again, a large uh, MABAR community uh, of agencies, uh, research centers, academic institutions, and so forth. Uh, we have uh, over 30 institutions of higher education in 11 Arab countries that are partners with us, and uh, over 350 registered and active portal members with discussion boards, uh, so these are the universities that we've partnered with, uh, and we target these regions. Um, uh, the Q&A that I, uh, I took some of those questions that you've asked me to answer, and uh, one of the questions was, does the idea of free software at the Mediterranean make any sense? My answer is, why not? Uh, we have uh, common or close civilizations, so we should be able to uh, define common projects. Um, we have common worries and interests, so uh, technology and culture exchange uh, is a need. The free and open source software can answer some of those needs. Uh, do you believe that Linux user groups still make sense in the 2011? Uh, maybe we should be more general, I'm saying. Maybe we should uh, talk about uh, FOSS, free and open source software user groups, or FOSS developer groups, or common interest groups also. So not only Linux may, may not be the priority, but other interest groups may be uh, uh, m more interested. A lot of companies benefit from free software. Should they give something back to the community? And how? Well, this is highly encouraged. If you use free and open source software, maybe you should give something in return through donations, sponsorships, supporting projects. We've done that. Actually, Google is one of the supporters of, uh, to a certain extent, of free software. And we've managed to bring some funds to Mabar uh, to support uh, student projects uh, at the high school level. Uh, what about companies developing products using free software? Should they give back and how? Well, if they are developing products using free software, that most probably they are developing free software, I hope. So they are already contributing. No? What about software patents? And that's too bad. Software patents at the Mediterranean level, should we be worried? Yes, we should be worried. Software patents limits innovation, limit innov innovation and contradict with software freedom. European Parliament voted a year ago to reject software patents inconclusively. However, this, the debate is still on. Okay, if you'd like to know more about software patents, maybe you should visit stop, oh, stops of softwarepatents.eu. Do you believe that governments should advocate the use of free software? Well, go governments don't advocate. Governments should act, but they can play a central role in policy making, in government agencies adopting these tools. And there are examples, Latin America. Uh, there's a lot of examples of governments that have taken decisions to use free software in their agencies and in the educational system. So I would like to wrap up with a quote in software, just like in education, if you give knowledge away freely, you will still have it for yourself to use. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Does this work? Okay, let's so um, I start by introducing myself. Um, so I'm Yuri Chukalo. I started as open source developer, mostly in web communities. Uh, but then in recent years, I discovered that there's actually much more that we can do, at least I can do with helping communities locally and leave developers to people that actually 
really, really passionately enjoy developing stuff. So, um, let's see. As you know, GPL was created in the 80s by developers, for developers, because they couldn't hack on their Unixes without being restricted, without, you know, having restrictions on how they can use software. Um, and it took them, like, you know, mid-90s, 95, 98, but, and around that time, Linux distributions became friendly enough that people started saying, hey, you know, maybe we don't need to upgrade our Windows. Maybe we can start slowly switching to Linux on desktop. Uh, maybe we can, you know, open office suites and things like that happen. And as you've probably heard, it's been a uh, year of Linux on desktop ever since. Um, and we're still working on that. But the public perception happened and, you know, every serious trade magazine in terms of computers started talking about Linux because of the increasing, increasing Microsoft tax, uh, where people started also pre-installing pre Linux on certain de laptops, things like that. So, uh, so what changed at that point? Software became good enough. You, normal person can actually, could actually use it, and it wasn't technical anymore. It was like, oh, I can use my software in my local language. I, get, I have a spell checker, you know, and there's no reason why I couldn't run a free uh, office suite on Windows, on Mac, and then as I grow accustomed to it, I can then go and start even using Linux desktop. And on the other hand, the web exploded, and projects like Firefox really showed that with open and free, inno with open innovation, we can develop so much more uh, without having to, to go through commercial vendors. And once again, local teams helped. So why is local important? Because we as a community have a limited resource of developers. Only so many people can develop, test, fix bugs. But as we attract local communities, we, we get you know, translators and those translators can take l early builds of software give it to their local community and then local community test stuff and say, you know, you know what? This version of LibreOffice breaks on this specific local document and it didn't and it worked before. And then go through the local community uh, translators, file bug reports and improve software much more rapidly. Also, those local people that are not developers start write, writing uh, manuals, giving workshops, and do all sorts of evangelization. You know, they go to schools, they go to ministries, they protest, they, you know, they talk to governments and say, you know, why are we paying so much money for things that we have in our local languages and there are no more excuses why we should go commercial way. I mean, why we should not seriously consider open software. Anyway, uh, this, I guess, this is like a screenshot from the recent Firefox. You can download it in 70 languages, and I'm pretty sure there are more coming. And that's a bit, you know, that's, that's how you get world domination, by getting, by going to each local community, figuring out how you can get people, uh, helping local communities translate it and go somewhere micro where Microsoft can't because they don't have resources. Maybe there's no market. Maybe it's politically a uh, questionable idea to actually to even start translating into that language. But then those communities are then even more interested in working with open developers and you know helping them achieve world domination. Um, so that's why I believe like events like this where we get different uh, kinds of people and talking about open software and translation and localization, like, you know, yes, go find a developer, explain to them that you want to go and translate their software, provide support to local communities, and that will enrich the whole ecosystem. Um, yeah, so that, that was just my, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, that was supposed to be like a round table and 
we were going to discuss things. I, I don't feel like the environment is especially uh, good for that, but we will try. We will try. Okay, so there's any question from the public or? Uh, I guess the problem is that, well, they've presented what they do, more or less, and what their, their ideas are. Maybe we'll, I can just review what, uh, what we were uh, discussing about the free software at the Mediterranean, uh, and we can discuss a little bit more between, uh, between the people here and the people there, because uh, everybody looks like uh, just listening, and I want people to participate. So, uh, when, when um, and on the presentation, you answered some of my questions, but I would like to just review them to, to be able to, to discuss and uh, to have back and forth, because uh, my idea was just to, to get an idea about them and, and just repeat the questions here and, and be able to discuss what, what are the views of, of everyone. So my first question was, uh, does free software at the Mediterranean uh, make sense? And you said yes, because you believe that we have a common interest in that. My idea on that question was, uh, do you believe that uh, it makes sense to differentiate uh, free software on the Mediterranean than free software around the world? M my idea was, not s I, I understand that it has uh, some meaning, but we are on a global world, so maybe mm, it's not just Mediterranean, it's just everywhere. So that was my point of view. So that's what I wanted you to... You, do you believe that uh, there's something very specific to, to the Mediterranean? Or maybe we have many local... Uh, from a developmental point of view? or From the user point of view? From I, I don't think there's anything specific, rather than, uh, as I said, defining uh, common projects of interest. Uh, we have a lot of in common. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, maybe the pollution area of, of, of the, the whole Mediterranean area. Uh, we have uh, uh, language, civilization, uh, uh, civilizations in common. So problems uh, can be, uh, uh, of interest can be defined, can be, uh, solutions can be written uh, using software. But rather than that, I don't see any anything specific. I mean, free software is free software. It's a conceptual issue, um, and it's it's it uh, it can be used for development, development of the of, uh, of uh, the human being, development of uh, the economies. Uh, uh, you know, if you look at it from that perspective. So, in my opinion, it makes sense for local regions to work together, like. As European Union is expanding, we like more well countries that are longer in part of EU can go and help get like government grants or you know EU funding for certain open source projects. Um, and if we if we can get so perfect example is like Balkans where where we're, we're starting to see more and more uh, of that area becoming part of EU um, and changing legislation and stuff like that. So once we, if we can get all those local teams working together, they can start using, you know, case studies from countries already adopting open source, adopting their legislation in terms of, you know, getting guidelines from the governments. Um, so, and also, it turns out that if if we can speak each other's local languages because of the cultural uh, history, it might be it's usually easier for us than if it, we don't speak if we speak from somebody on the other side of the world, just because uh, we're already you know neighbors and why don't we work more together? Anyone from the public? Um, hello. Hello. Um, I'm from Albania, and in Albania, government is a little bit slow in in uh, adopting open source software. And what do you suggest, or what do you, from your experience, what should we as uh, open source advocates in Albania do to 
introduce free and open source software to the government? Uh, so, in my experience, just continue doing what you're doing and do more of it. So, every computer that's running some sort of open software is one step forward the, towards the goal. Um, showing good practices, um, talk to your local journalists, you know, hey, Munich migrated part of their infrastructure to Linux. Go talk to those guys in Germany, see if you can get interview with them and then translate it into your local language or, you know, get it. To, so people that might not, not necessarily follow the uh, foreign press can see, oh, you know, Germans are doing it. Maybe that's a good idea to copy them. Just because we always like to copy others instead of, you know, go doing it ourselves. Um, that and use, like, if you follow EU legislation, they're always like... <laughs> so there are always, like, uh, ideas how like guidelines, funding, and maybe you can get like some sort of development money to promote con such uh, activities, and that's good enough. I mean, that's not good enough, but it's a great help in terms of evangelization. Thank you. Uh, you said that the government is slow in, in what? In adopting? Free software. Free software. Yeah, but why do you want the government to act? After all, free software is a public good. It's from the community. You need to act. Okay? You don't, you don't yeah. wait for the government to do anything. I was asking for uh, advice on us, not on the government. Yes. So okay. what, what should we do? To what you should do, the first thing you should do, you should work with schools. Because this is where kids learn computing. Okay? If, you, if they get computing right, I think they will get this mentality of free software. So schools is priority number one. Thank you. And if, if you want to convince uh, governments uh, of, of using free software, or not governments, anyone, uh, you need to show them that, y that it can be used for, for, uh, for what they need. So probably we're not there, for example, to use uh, free software for gaming, because that's not uh, yet there, but we will, we'll get, we will get there. But we can use it for almost everything. I mean, I, I can use it for almost everything I do. So what what uh, you can do is first, if you want the government to to, if you want to be able to work with the government with free software, not them, you, you need to ask them to use open formats. I mean, that's a big problem. If they don't use open formats, you cannot interact with them with free software. And after that, if you if you show them that you have the tools to work with these formats. Well, mm, that's a way to, to show them that it can be done. A and of course, uh, if you start with the kids, uh, that's, that's great. You know that uh, Unix is so popular because a lot of computer science students uh, studied the code, the code of that. So they wanted to use Unix and on the, uh, on the uh, workplace. So that's the idea of uh, the, the cheaper licenses from Microsoft, for example, for schools. They want people to, to need the, their software at home, at the work, uh, so they learn how to use Microsoft Word. They don't want to, to, to change. So the best thing you can do is provide the tools, the free tools, and show that everything can be done with them. Okay? Uh, there was another question? Yeah, maybe less a question than comment relating to your uh, what you're saying about kids and about uh, open formats and about what ones I learn that's what I use now I would it's my point of view that in Mediterranean we are a little bit more relaxed about certain rules and laws like in the northern western Europe uh, what I'm talking about is uh, probably everybody know that piracy is uh, there is a lot of piracy, at least in the Balkans, which I know more about. I suspect most of the Mediterranean, it's really like, oh, why buy if I can copy, you know? Uh, so it, I think it is necessary to uh, push the mentality that it is uh, a bad, is kind of disservice to yourself 
to pirate commercial software because that creates a dependency uh, on it and eventually you will be in a situation where piracy is not uh, appropriate and uh, like you know a, a public uh, company uh, school and you will have to pay uh, basically to America the money to use it whereas if we start like in, with kids with free software not because it's free because also the pirated software is free but I mean gratis but because it creates a different kind of uh, dependency a different kind of connection I think this is the the key key for the Mediterranean to really start using uh, free software to know that actually by pirating or by giving a friend a Photoshop you are making a big disservice to them instead of giving them GIMP no? well uh, I don't like to use the term piracy it reminds me of uh, some old uh, uh, pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, that's uh, uh, so it's pro it's illegal uh, or unlicensed proprietary software. Okay, you said uh, why can I buy it if I can get it for free? Don't buy it and don't get it for free. Get free software. Okay. Uh, so yes, schools are um, uh, you know teaching their kids how to become dependent on a product, on a company, okay? And then when they go out, they have to buy it. That's correct, I agree with that. So we have to start from the schools, convincing the, uh, the network of schools in each country, or the public schools, if possible, to uh, use good alternatives, public good, proprietary, uh, I mean, uh, free software. Well, well, I agree that yeah, we should. That we sh yeah, paying for content if you respect authors is good because that teaching people that creating intellectual property so that creating content costs will get us also more money in terms of donation and support for free software. On the other hand, for for schools, I think we need to give kids more credit, teaching them. Proprietary software doesn't mean that they don't think for themselves and they, don't, they can't relearn specifics of open software. We still, if we can get money to teach them informatics, we, we should. Hi, I have a, one good example from Bosnia. Uh, last Debian conference is held in uh, Bosnia, it was a few months ago. It's uh, one of the biggest uh, Linux uh, conference uh, in the world. Uh, local uh, Linux uh, user group uh, tried to organize Debian conference for the last three or four years, I think. But it's impossible without uh, money. And uh, they go to the government and explain them why it's so important and uh, that it's a very popular conference in the world. And they catch on to that. And they give a lot of money and uh, pay every expenses and everything for conference. So I think it's a good example for colleague from Albania. Go to your government, explain them why it's so important and uh, maybe they'll catch on to your story. Just try. And uh, from the uh, conference, now I read the news that uh, uh, government uh, have uh, some uh, contacts with Ubuntu. Uh, company, so they tried uh, to implement Ubuntu into government uh, agencies. For now, Microsoft hold the uh, whole uh, government in Bosnia, but maybe it's going to be Linux in you know, next year, maybe a few months. Who knows? Thank you. Just a quick comment. Also, talk to Mozilla. Uh, there are a bunch of also like maybe TechSoup guys can help you out. Um, there's there is quite a lot of money for communities that are very active local. Uh, they will either pay expenses to go to international events and uh, network with other participants, but they will also often bring developers to your country if you're willing to do your part of the deal and organize the venue and convince the local community that yes, we're doing something interesting and we'll bring you 
experts from all over the world. So that usually works pretty well. Well, if if uh, if you want, I can just uh, any any question. I can just keep taking the the questions I I, I send you, and and we can continue discussing. For example, something that has been. Uh, mm, We've been talking about not directly, but uh, but I see that almost all the people that has asked it ask it questions is belongs to s or participates in some kind of uh, open source or free software project. Am I right? Everybody here has been participating in in some way. My question is uh, how people just get involved in 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 free software. I mean. Uh, in, a, in an event like that, of course, we have a lot of people developing, but now I uh, think we have a lot of, of ways of, of getting in touch with free software. When I was asking about if, if local groups make sense, uh, I was asking because in Spain, probably it's different in, in other countries, uh, local Linux user groups made sense in a, in a, in, um, in a time uh, that uh, it was about uh, software, about computing, uh, about experts, and you didn't have a community near to ask but now that we have the internet and everybody has internet at home this is not uh, needed anymore for user groups that was my question about because i saw that you were a member of of your country's user groups and my question was uh, do the user groups make sense and how does people cooperate now because i think we have a different need now i mean the, we have a lot of users but we ha we don't have that many developers do you have developers in your teams i mean in in uh, in Bosnia, you have uh, the people that organize the, the the event were all developers, were users. I mean, how how do we uh, accomplish that? We have more people involved as a user, as a developer, as a tester, or what, as a translator. Uh, so that that was my question in in a general sense. So. Same with you. So. As you probably know, the new version of Ubuntu came out yesterday, um, and like I guess right now, at least in Ljubljana, we have installation install fest for the new Ubuntu. Uh, even though we might not get as many people as we did 10 years ago, we there are still you know people with strange. That it, in some ways, if you, it's harder today with laptops because. For certain types of hardware, you actually need expert support to get you running. So, yeah, install fast are still important and education. Because, in my opinion, user groups and local communities, whatever you call them, um, are about education. So, once you had install fast, yes, you installed Linux. But then you also had talks. You had people that could, you know, go and say, "Hey, can you show me?" or "How do you do that?" What, you know, and of course, and th that's the that's the real benefit because googling online forums, yes, that's nice, but personal touch is what gets you running. The idea is that no, but the, the idea is that you have all the kinds of communities. I understand what you say, but you have online communities for other things. So, mm, no, I, I agree with you that uh, local uh, local contact is better, but everybody says here that uh, uh, internet communities are so important, but. You you still agree that there, there's a need for for uh, local meetings? Or okay, that's nice. <laughs> have anything to add? Uh, well, I I've mentioned one idea in my presentation uh, as an answer to this question that uh, it's not necessarily Linux groups. Okay, it's it's any 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 development maybe more interesting. Developers can get together and work. And there's and there's passion in development. I I used to develop a lot, not anymore. But I mean, development is a passion. Just like uh, kids play sport, they get hooked into development and they get into it, and then and they, they uh, you know they become developers. So uh, yes, uh, local groups uh, could be useful because they can interact more. But with now the uh, the larger community of the internet. More and more people are just, you know, becoming members of larger groups beyond their communities. So. No, nothing about that. I mean, how how do you have entered into free software? You you are collaborating, you are translating, you are developing. Anyone? 
to say yes, no, it's just to make it this a little bit funnier. No? Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I owe a thank you to Microsoft for entering me in the Linux world. I <laughs> I I I used uh, Ubuntu, but I bought a new laptop which came with Vista pre-installed, and uh, my ISP provider didn't work with Vista, so I couldn't ha I couldn't connect to internet with Vista in my laptop. So I double booted uh, I, I installed uh, Ubuntu next to Vista, and since then. I have removed Vista altogether and I'm on Ubuntu all the time. I'm a web developer and I'm involved with a WordPress uh, community and uh, that's, that's my work right now. I, I'm a freelance web developer. So all, f all free software. So to all thi thanks to thanks Microsoft to, Vista. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> I guess that don't, that's not what they want to hear, but uh, yeah. it's, it's a nice story. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, uh, we can just uh, move on to other questions uh, I was uh, talking about. Some of you, uh, so, some of them you answered before. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I had questions about uh, the personal level, that's what we are just discussing, how people get involved. And later at a corporate level, and, and I, I didn't agree with some of your answers, maybe because that was a, sm a small question and maybe we have to, but for example, uh, one of my questions was, a lot of companies uh, benefit from using free software, uh, should they give back and how should they give back? And, and well, uh, just if you, if you can repeat what you said, I, I, I guess we can uh, just discuss uh, what, what we all think about that. I mean, I mean, what about companies using free software and, and uh, if they do get back or not and if they should because they don't have to. That's a different point. Yeah, com companies that use free software don't have to give back, but I, I believe ethically they should somehow. They should give back to the community what the community has given to them. So uh, they can do this by donations, by uh, supporting projects. Uh, um, there are different ways. Uh, b b you, can, you can see on many sites that please donate a small amount so that this project can proceed. And I know that a lot of organizations do that, especially that in some parts of the world, uh, donations are tax exempt. So uh, that's encouragement to do that. Um, it depends also on the nature of the company. If the company is a software company, then they could probably donate by giving back uh, new versions or improvements or uh, another free software. So, does that satisfy your question? No, my point was uh, uh, for for the next question. That is, uh, the companies that are developing using free software, and you said uh, they are contributing, and they are not. I mean, I know a lot of a lot of companies, and I guess here a lot of people uh, knows that that there are lots of companies now that are using free software. They don't have the um, legal obligation to, to share when they use, depending on the license they use, but they are making money and not giving back. And I, I know a lot of companies like that. That's, that was a different uh, question. But if you want to ask the, the previous one. So, so, by st so those companies needs to li need to read their licenses. If the license is MIT, doesn't require, you know, releasing software open source, okay. Just you know, respect the license. Second thing, the best thing those the companies can do is to make even more money using open source. As you know, just make lots of money, hire lots of developers, and make even more money, because that's how the ecosystem grows. Because if we have Python shop, we have you know, using open source stacks um, built on Apache, w Java, whatever, then those companies will train developers to work with free tools, with open tools in open ecosystems. And as they grow, they will start releasing software back, committing code on GitHub, you know, issuing patches, just because it's going to be cheaper for them and more efficient to be part of the ecosystem instead of forking everything. Um, we really don't need to go and ask them for direct donations. I mean, because 
they're already training people and as those people you know leave the leave companies go to other companies they will advocate free software instead of closed stacks um, and and hmm, and the third thing is if the company is behaving uh, is a good player in, in, in their local environment they will sponsor events anyway they will be sponsors of different conferences they will sponsor to get external experts into that country so they can talk to them um, so we you know we can do better we can support the whole ecosystem and entrepreneurs that are using open software we don't need to go to them directly and say hey we need your donations because yeah we can build so much more when I talk about giving back, it's not it's not money. I mean, uh, it's it's uh, just giving back uh, in in the in the way. Uh, I mean, I don't know if if uh, the people here involved in free software, for example, uh, sends uh, bug reports or uh, sends patches or things like that. It's not it's not about money usually. What I, what I mean is, a lot of companies that I know use free software. Uh, they fix things or they change things, and sometimes they release software and maybe the license allows them so it's it's legal absolutely legal but i think it's uh, we, we need to teach or or maybe it's it's a problem of education we need to teach people working on the computer science side of things to give back in the sense of con contributing translations contributing uh back reports cooperating with the community when you use free software in the in the um in the free in the in the non-free software industry uh, the problem is that people has doesn't get the culture of, of cooperating. It's the same thing as, as not cooperating in other in other environments. I mean, uh, it's for me. Uh, you know, for example, I think they, they have talks about Android here. For me, Android, yes, maybe it has a free license, but it works like okay, we work on this, we keep it, and chum, another version after any months. So um, that's not the way free software development should work in my opinion of course and i think a lot of companies don't do it that way so that was my question i think i think people that use this free software mm, need to know more maybe that's one of the things that people here can do if they work in that in in this kind of environment just teach uh, users how to cooperate or give back in a non uh, economic way i mean it's that's not the point the point is if you have a some user that sh gets a lot of uh, translation mistakes do they report back to you does these translations get back to the software that was my 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 idea not not asking for money for the companies they, they are in the business for money <laughs> i mean it's not i mean it's up to open source communities to make it easier to so i believe in free market and that the companies that fork and don't give back will be less efficient than the companies that work with the uh, communities. It's up to the community to say, hey, don't worry, you're, if you're a commercial company, we still love you, we want to get, get your stuff. Uh, we don't see you as evil one. But we, so, we just need to make it sure, ensure that it's much cheaper and much more efficient to work with the community. We don't really need to say hey you know you have those patches why don't you give them back don't worry they will come as as at the point when it becomes too m too much work to maintain their own fork uh one good example to support what he's saying uh everybody remembers um novel the company novel in the 80s they developed uh, they were the only uh, network uh, solution provider back then before the internet, and they had a protocol called IPX. Well, I don't know if any one of you remember IPX. Now, IPX uh, in, in the, was closed; was not provided as a protocol to the to the public, and there was there was a lot of debate between the communities and Novell. And please let us open this protocol so that we can cooperate. Novell refused. IP replaced IPX eventually, and IP became the protocol of the internet of networks. And today, Novell is a different company. So this is a good example of why things should be open and should be free, because eventually communities will become stronger than 
smaller companies or even large companies sometimes. And the, a good example of that also is um, uh, LibreOffice, which the group of OpenOffice uh, at Oracle, when Oracle was a when when Oracle acquired uh, Sun Microsystems, which originally owned or acquired uh, the Open Office project, uh, so this small group uh, decided to go on their own because of some polic policies and, and 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 some problems with uh, Oracle itself, and eventually they uh, they became stronger than the Open Office project owned by the large and a huge company Oracle. A small group of, I don't know how many developers, maybe 15, 20, but do you know? S very small group because they wanted to remain open and uh, give uh, what they're doing to the community. And, they, and then LibreOffice now has, re has been replaced in most Linux distributions, I believe, if not all. LibreOffice, what, what is called LibreOffice was, was what was in the distributions and li because I know that on the Linux distributions because uh, Sun and later Oracle was uh, had a, a, a very bad distribution for Linux and it had a lot of patches so what they do is just took this patched uh, open office and call it the LibreOffice but yeah, yeah. and uh, on, the, on, on their way they fixed some bugs that were standing on the on the back tracker years ago so but that case is w where people knows how to cooperate with the community i mean in that case uh, the community that has forked and later taken the real project were already people that knew how to cooperate and how to work what i was talking about is those companies that doesn't uh, know how to cooperate if if uh, there's a way to teach them or, or if they should and you say well your answer is clear for me is uh, you agree with me that they should but maybe they don't know or they we have to show them how that can be better for them so that's that's uh, that was my question really okay. any any question from the people no okay I have more questions so no problem <laughs> Okay, uh, on the on the questions you you answered before, uh, well, I think we we don't we don't need to talk about patents. Yeah. Anybody interested in software patents? No, we don't, we don't like them. So okay, we agree on that. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Well, imagine that uh, uh, Einstein decided to patent E equal M C squared. Just a small example. What would happen with science today? I mean, uh, mathematics cannot be patent. Ideas cannot be patent. Thoughts cannot be patent. Sh software should not be patent. But you know that uh, if you if you do it right, a wheel can be patent. So that's uh, they did it. So <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, let's let's move to another uh, subject. Uh, we have been talking about free software and the administration and. He was asking about how to promote, how to advocate the free software to the administration. I guess we all know why uh, we believe that administration should use it, but uh, I don't know if, if, if you believe that uh, uh, if they do enough uh, on this respect, in the, on, the maritime, on the towns you, towns, I mean countries you, you live. C uh, can I comment on that? So I, I think that's a wrong question. We, I mean, there's a lot of Zillow Tree in open source saying, you know, there's only one right way and we're going to spread it, you know, with, with sword and fire and it's just going to be open source. And then at that point you become, it becomes a religion and it becomes an, you know, a religious battle. What we, I, in my personal opinion, we should fight for transparency in government, uh, in, in buying software for government and uh, public use. If open source is better, then by all means, go use open source, buy local open source support, invest in that. If you can get some sort of, you know, invest, like you in governments invest in research, sure. Invest in stuff that's, that you can then return back, back to taxpayers. But if there's a commercial product at this point in time that suits the needs of governments better, then 
it should be up to transparent buying decisions to, s to become clear why it's bought. And it's not like, yeah, open source for any price and with any means. Okay. <laughs> I agree with that. You know, uh, uh, in the community uh, I work for, uh, well, I live on, not, not work for. Uh, we have a project that it's about a free um, geographical information system uh, uh, client. They used to pay uh, for a commercial product, I don't remember the name, and the local government did their numbers and they decided to build their own because they estimated that having a better product for their needs, not maybe better than the commercial one, uh, was going to cost them more or less the same as buying the licenses. So they developed it, it and well, it's it's working now. Now they don't have, uh, or they, there's not much uh, government support right now, but they, they keep going because there was uh, a, a lot of um, small companies in my region that uh, started to use that product and develop for that product, and they are selling uh, services and products based on that on that uh, system so that's something that maybe some s in some occasions uh, governments have to just look at because I agree with you I if they have to make things work they have to make things work now so if there's no free software for that I, I totally agree with you use the right tool for what you need but sometimes uh, they need to think a little bit more because of the other reasons you gave so I agree with you, but uh, sometimes I think uh, governments don't th don't see uh, the potential of uh, working together. This uh, uh, putting together some communities, uh, governments, and agreeing, or for example, developing some tool and made, make it free. That that could be a very good uh, thing to do. But I don't know why that doesn't work now. Now, that's my. Uh, so, as you, s you, you were just talking about geographical data, what I believe should be like a from approach from the community should be more uh, wholesome, holistic. So, saying, hey, if the taxpayers are paying for something, we should strive that it, there's a way to bring it back to the same public. So, if we're the the problem with governments developing their own open source solution is that I if we start buying custom software even if it's open source by all practical means it might it might as well be closed because it's not it's unmaintainable if it, there's no community and if there's no alternative uh, on the other hand we have a lot of closed data like you know maps or linguistic yeah. data uh, from research institution research grants so we should I will develop software will be able to get software but we have the same problem as we had with binary blobs in firmwares so the backstory is if you own a laptop there's a high chance that you cannot run your uh, wireless card without having to install some to have some sort of binary uh, so a piece of code that you cannot see and inspect and we're see seeing the same thing with linguistic data and and maps and you know also like in postal codes for example in many countries and as as we liberate that kind of data will we we will also be able to find different pieces of open source out in the wild from different community from different countries that we can reuse so let's let's work on a infrastructure level instead of just focusing on software and licenses Well, uh, I uh, I had a, a, a another question that is, was more for the missing uh, speaker that was about uh, regional uh, custom distributions. I don't know if, if any of you have been involved in this kind of distributions. Just uh, you know that in Spain there was a time, I not not now, but uh, maybe seven years ago or something like that, that all uh, communities had their own Linux distribution. And just my question is, do you, do you believe that that makes sense? Uh, I don't know if you have them or not, but uh, the idea is, do you believe that makes sense to have 
customized distributions for uh, local regions or specific uses or whatever? Just a, a general question about that. I, I, I love what Ubuntu is doing with that, just giving you ability to create your local Ubuntu that's tailored to your local region and at the same time still be Ubuntu without any ugly hacks and compatible with all the tutorials you find on the internet. I think that's the best approach right now. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, there are examples in the Arab region. There are two distributions that are full, fully Arabized, uh, but they, they, they were built on top. I mean, they took Ubuntu or Debian or Fedora, and then and they changed the whole thing. But I, I don't think it's a good idea. I think uh, the idea of what Ubuntu is doing but by providing all these different locals lo or locales is a better idea because the management of it and the support of it is better than local communities. Yeah, no, no. The idea, the idea of uh, that's that was m kind of my point. I mean, uh, when there were that many Spanish distributions, uh, at some point it made sense because uh, they did some translations and things that were faster to do in in their local repositories. And but what they really need is an, an infrastructure to work on, on a local environment and simplify things for, for kinds of use. I mean, for example, in Debian or in Ubuntu, there are uh, custom distributions that are tailored for medical science, for students, for that. And what they do is use the, the, the common distribution and just adapt it to different kinds of uses. That makes sense to me. But uh, the idea of this, uh, so what, what we are missing is the, the point of the, the uh, a missing speaker that probably should should have to say no to my <laughs> point because they have uh, local distributions, but they end up being just like that is now. They are almost all of them are uh, Ubuntu with uh, with some kind of taming, and that's it. It's nice, but it's not uh, anything special. But it's good to. I, I feel that it's better to to learn to teach the people that they are using a common distribution and they don't feel that they have something different to, to the rest of the world but they are using the tailored uh, version for their uh, for their region so okay so uh, um hello my name is ala ala Kutesh. i'm a linux engineer Actually, I agree with the idea that uh, users, sorry, uh, that users should have uh, multiple uh, forks from Linux because uh, <laughs> um, there is uh, there is also other, another uh, other Linux than Ubuntu, uh, like Arch Linux, that you can uh, build your own Linux from scratch. You know, LFS, LFS Linux. So you get the kernel, uh, you get the kernel. And you build your own Linux depending on your users, so it's not like you are as as much as you are not changing the philosophy of Linux and the spirit of Linux. Um, this is right because um, you shouldn't stick with just Ubuntu or Fedora or or any distribution and keep it as this is a Linux. You B besides the learning experience, what do you get? Like keep on building new distributions, what's the purpose? I mean, it's good that you learn, yes. There's a learning factor in it. But what are you doing besides that? You are building a Linux system that is customized for your needs. For example, I'm, okay, I'm a web developer, okay? I, I, I install the uh, Linux from scratch. I build the, the needed services that I want, for, uh, like uh, database server, Apache, and the, ne the tools I need. So I get a really customized Linux just for my users. Uh, for example, if you if you are an ISP, telecommunication company, you you want you install uh, Red Hat and Fedora and comes with all these packages and for example Bluetooth package, uh, printing packages. If you want to to do a mail server, why you should get a, a, a printing uh, packages or um, Bluetooth package? You just get the uh, kernel and install the packages that you need and you get the service. Um, <laughs> Uh, with uh, that takes limited resources from your server, so you get maximum performance and uh, customized um, functionality. 
but for that's but you're not building a new distribution you're just disabling or removing applications that you don't need but you're using a distribution that already exists no sorry because um when you get the kernel, you get vanilla source. Linux from scratch, you get vanilla source. Uh, so you get the uh, the options that are enabled in the in the kernel just for your use. You you want in Fedora, uh, you get Linux uh, kernel configured with all all options. So it's uh, to be flexible with all anything you want. When you build it yourself, you get customized kernel with um, limited module models on it, and this is. So at some point, you start valuing your time. And yes, sure, go out, knock yourself out, build your own car. You know, yes, you can. It's, but maybe, you know, just maybe you can stand on shoulders of giants of things that others did before you and just customize things that provide real value to yourself. So yes. If you're in a business of building embedded devices or building highly customized routers, sure, it makes sense for you to invest in customized own Linux distribution if you have resources. Yeah. But the, the bigger picture with localized distributions here is that um, we already have enough work with just teaching people how to use mouse and what a window manager is and why there's a difference between Firefox and Chrome and Explorer. And you know, yeah, that's enough work. We really don't need to have overhead of maintaining our own fork of Linux kernel. That's uh, that's that's what we're talking about. Um, 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 I agree with you about the, the giant that they did a huge work and good work. But we uh, in the, the thing I want to 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 tell you that we are not wasting. We are not throwing uh, throwing all these changes and all these packages that, uh, that they made. We're just customizing them as as we we need, you know. For ex and even th even though, um, it, f for example, if you're doing uh, our server, okay, why why you want to install? Uh, if, if you are using Red Hat, you get the uh, the win the window manager by default, and you disable it for servers. You no one use GUI on servers, so you get a feature by default from the uh, Red Hat, and you disable it. Yeah, you know, the good thing about Linux distributions and, and well, free distributions, because you, ca you, you also have a free BSD, you also have OpenBSD, and you have other free software that is used to build an a, a operating system, uh, is that you can do whatever you want. And I agree with you. That there are lots of distributions that they do their work because they have uh, people willing to do it, and that's okay. What I was asking, you're talking about a different uh, use case. I mean, what we were talking about is, does it make, sen make sense for governments or for institutions to uh, develop custom distributions for, the, for their local zone? And they are not going to care about this thing you're talking about. They are not going to care about if the kernel supports that or that, because they are building already, they need a, a generalized distribution like Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever. So what they were doing was not at the level you were talking about. They, they were doing at a higher level, and it has, it has a, a, a lot of uh, problems, because you have to train users. They think that they are using a different thing. For example, in, in Valencia, we had a distribution that is called Urex. And for marketing reasons, they say it's Urex. And it's not Urex, it's Ubuntu with uh, a mouse. I mean, that's it. Literally a mouse. It's, it's a mascot, I mean. <laughs> but, uh, and it's, it's quite, quite nice, the mouse. Okay. So, but it's, it's just uh, Ubuntu. So my, my question was about that. What you're talking about is much more uh, technical. At a, at a technical level, I agree with you. It makes sense to have different con configurations, different distributions from a learning point of view. But from a general point of view, uh, it's not just Ubuntu, Fedora, whatever. It's, yeah. uh, be able to use what is already there and not fragment the market more. Because if we are trying to push the users of Firefox or we are trying to push the use of OpenOffice, so we have to change the names now. We have to teach the people that there are 11 alternatives. And that's nice and that's good, but it's not bad to choose one and say, is that? And just arrange it for your local use and that's it. Yeah. But it's not, uh, it doesn't invalidate what you're doing, I mean. Yeah, um, in that case, I agree with you that um, 
using um, uh, CentOS or, or, or Red Hat and customize them with small packages, like just installing them and, and ship them with the uh, required packages, required applications, like scientific, scientific Ubuntu or, or something. You get all packages installed and you, to make it easier for users. On, on higher level. That's oh. the idea. Yeah, the that's idea was that, and yeah. that's what's my question about. I mean, yeah. yes. So, uh, the, uh, do you think that uh, the the market uh, for Ubuntu is very fragmented? So, uh, is is a uh, an a better idea to concentrate the the can, can you speak uh, with the mic closer? Because we, we uh, if, you, if you want, you can speak in Spanish, and I can. Oh, <laughs> bien. <laughs> so, eh, eh, piensas que eh, eh, Ubuntu ha, ha hecho que al haber cada cada distribución, una distribución por cada comunidad autónoma, ha, ha fragmentado muchísimo más el mercado de lo que es las distribuciones basadas en Ubuntu y basadas en basadas. Okay, uh, he he's asking about uh, if if uh, I think he was talking to me, but we think that uh, Ubuntu has fragmented the the. Um, distribution market with these uh, local community distributions here in Spain. Well, he was talking about here in Spain. Uh, if, if you want, I can answer that because I know more <laughs> about that. Uh, well, I can answer in Spanish and later. <laughs> uh, hombre, el problema es que Ubuntu no ha fragmentado. Han sido las comunidades autónomas las que han hecho distribuciones. La distribución de Valencia estaba basada en Debian. De hecho, yo trabajaba en la distribución de Valencia que estaba basada en Debian. Cuando yo me fui es cuando consiguieron meter Ubuntu porque yo no quería. Pero bueno, eso es parte. Eh, entonces, el tema es, no ha sido Ubuntu la que ha fragmentado, sino que cada comunidad ha querido su propia versión, pero hoy por hoy todo el mundo que las usa sabe que es Ubuntu. Porque Ubuntu hace mucho marketing. Entonces, realmente no creo que sea fragmentado. ¿sabes? What I was telling is that uh, it's, it's more the political side here in Spain where every local community wanted to have a distribution. And... Um, Really, what they have, uh, what Ubuntu has accomplished is that uh, everybody is based on Ubuntu now in Spain, and everybody knows that it's based on Ubuntu. So, really, they just know that their local distribution is Ubuntu, and the people at the schools or at the government use the localized version, but they know that it's Ubuntu. So, yo no creo que no creo que que esté fragmentado aquí. La gente que las usa sabe lo que es. O sea, que I think that's maybe it's better because people know that uh, the, what they are using is Ubuntu and they use the when they like it they they go to the standard one. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? If you if there are no more questions, I think that we can just leave it here. No more questions. Okay. So thank you both and see you again sometime. <laughs>